Um, hello, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Brendan Egan and I'm the Schinner Scholar here at Limerick City Gallery of Art. And today I am just having a conversation with Adam Stoneman about his curated exhibition, Cows Are Mostly Silent, that is here at the gallery at the moment. Um, first of all, I just want to actually say congratulations on the show. Um, it's a really beautifully put together show. It's very dynamic. Um, and of course, it really complements Mary Burke's exhibition at Home on the Farm. Um, and I know that that was the kind of remit, I suppose, of, of, your, of this work was to, to, uh, to respond to her work. Um, so I suppose the first thing uh, that I'm curious about is the title. Yeah, um, so... Uh, the the title uh, "Cows Are Mostly Silent" comes from a poem by Martina Evans. Uh, the The poem's called "Cows," and um, the the first line is "Are mostly silent, uh, sharp shouldered, uh, fertile, uh, moist eyed, long lashed." It's a really nice poem. Uh, and uh, some months ago, Una had sent me a recording of. Emma de Beery, the writer, reading the poem, which is a really delightful reading, actually. Um, I'd recommend uh, finding it online. And that uh, that poem, so, so, so that was kind of at the end of last year, that sort of uh, stayed with me. And then when, um, when Una asked, uh, you know, to, to, if I could select some works from the permanent collection to respond to Mary Burke, I felt that that, first line cows are mostly silent really captured the sort of ambiguity and the ambivalence that I was interested in I think in you know if you look at the Mary you know the the, the particularly I'm thinking of um Mary Burke's uh, work the McNamara herd mm -hmm. and if you look at the cows and you 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 look at their try to look them in their eyes there's this there's this distance you know and I think it's fundamental to our relationship to animals that there's when we look them in the eyes we don't fully know what they're thinking how they're feeling how they feel about us how they feel about uh, the world that we have created for them I've always been interested in that I grew up you know in like in, in Galway in, in the countryside um, always had animals growing up and uh, and that you know sort of which that sort of ambivalence is never there in Disney films right in Disney films they're all anthropomorphic characters that are basically human in animal form yeah. but with real animals and in Mary Burke's show you know you see it there's 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 this kind of unsettling actually feeling that we don't really know what what's going on um, behind their eyes, and uh, so I think cows are mostly silent. The, that that line captures that sort of um, un, unsettling feeling that you know we don't we don't really know what what they're thinking about. So obviously, of course, in the show there is there's a great variety of artworks, and many of them um, are abstract in their forms and their presentation. Um, examples that come to mind are uh, the Helen Gorey piece, um, Cecil King, John Shinners, um, and a, a good few more actually. And I suppose what I'm wondering is why were you drawn to th these pictures, these pieces in in particular, um, and this this kind of the abstract works in particular. My my initial response was to delve into Limerick City Gallery collection and look for those works that were historical depictions and representations of farm life and uh, cows and sheep and so on. Um, and the, 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 the Liberty City Gallery, I mean, it, it, was, it was such a pleasure to kind of, to, to explore the collection more uh, in order to kind of think about this um, selection because uh, it does have a, a really rich, um, seam of its collection is this sort of genre of the pastoral uh you know uh, historical uh representations of i suppose the golden veil um 
and so the painters like Augustus Burke or um, uh, jo uh, George Chinnery, you know, there's a, there's you, there's definitely an exhibition in there of that that kind of historical, you know, nineteenth century representation of of uh, farmland and the the countryside. But but then I looked at Mary Burke's show again and looking through the works again and I realized that she already contains those those representations in her work I mean like in her Mary Burke's show is uh, I think very deliberately anti-romantic anti-bucolic anti-pastoral mm -hmm. And it's all the stronger for it, you know. It, it's almost like a, a materialist. She's interested in the architecture of farming, the machinery of farming. You know, she wants to peel back the mystification that that the romantic images of a farmyard produce. But I, I thought it didn't. We didn't need. We're already familiar. We're so familiar with the romantic uh, image of a farm, farmland. Uh, it, it's 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 deeply embedded. I think in our unconscious. That I, I started to think we don't need. I don't. You don't need to show people that which she is refuting. The antithesis is already implied. Um. So I thought it might be more interesting and more productive to go the other way and to look uh, in the collection for works that were kind of even more ambiguous, uh, even more um, uh, unstable um, in their uh, depictions um, or, or, or lack of depictions, right? So I was, I was thinking, what about if we, if we go the other way and, and really look at works that uh you know are, are are barely barely there at all in terms of uh, a connection to the farm I, I i should say once i sort of started thinking let's let's actually go the other way and think of sort of more modern art uh and contemporary uh and less figurative responses i, I turned to john berger who um i think is one of the few modern writers to write intelligently about animals and and our relationship to them and he had uh, a short story collection um, uh, called um, Once in Europa. And there's a, there's a story in that about this uh, kind of family in, in the Alpine village in Switzerland. Uh, and, and, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of a farmyard in a Swiss context. Uh, one of the characters t tells this riddle and the riddle is something like two point to the sky, four walk in the dew, and six uh, contain food. All 12 make one, what is it? And, and the, the character replies, it's a cow. Uh, two horns point in the air, four feet walk in the dew, and six feet provide food. And so suddenly something clicked and I thought, actually, riddles are really interesting because as an analogy for, for modern art, because they, they, they destabilize language, because we would never think that this sort of description of, of, of 12 pointed things uh, could, could, could together be, form a cow. I mean, in terms of language, that's a very strange way. It's a very strange way to describe a cow. But suddenly, if you, once you, you, that kind of aha moment, you realize that, uh, that a cow can be conceptualized in this very strange formal way. <laughs> and I think that sort of ability in a riddle to kind of pull the, the rug of language under your feet to destabilize what we what we think is very stable is very interesting, very liberating as well. And I think that's what's all you know interesting about lots of the abstract or semi-abstract works in, in, in the gallery's collection. Um, I should say the analogy or the comparison only goes so far because I was very clear that 
modern art isn't like a riddle where you go, ha, you know, that's the answer. I think <laughs> art, art that does have this effect, uh, Banksy is a, is a very popular example, uh, where it's basically a visual pun. You know, it, it's it's quite shallow, I think. Uh, and it's sort of a quite a cheap reward for the for the for the viewer. But uh, but nevertheless, if we stick to that idea of, of, of sort of uh, destabilizing language, what you know, forcing us to see language in a new way, I think that um, abstract, the semi-abstract works where you're moving towards abstraction. It has the same uh, effect, I think. Um, and one work uh, particular to kind of uh, illustrate this i think is is of course john shinner's uh, cows come home mm. you know he, on the sort of right hand side of the painting you you have these sort of black and white forms kind of emerging or disappearing into the background mist and if it wasn't for the vertical uh recognize the, the shape that we recognize as as a gate perhaps i i think it it, it would it you know it, it would be a kind of abstract image uh our artwork is always open to interpretation where you say kind of abstract the abstract work was really open to interpretation yet mary's work is still kind of even though she's very non-romantic in her approach um audiences can still see it uh, as, a, as kind of an analogy as a way, but in a way because the, the symbols of the cow or just the simple field is still very emotive to people. And they still speak to all of our kind of, uh, our, 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 our childhoods or our backgrounds or our families or experiences, even though that was not her intention. But I think it's a great example of how that can happen regardless. And then on the other end, as you said, when things are pushed so far into abstraction that they're open for interpretation, but they can, they can still be pulled back to that place of kind of like where we kind of, we kind of, aha, I think I know what you're talking about, that kind of riddle. Um, so I think, I think your, your approach to that was brilliant. I think it was and really well done. You know, I, I like this uh, sort of sense of, of really, um, you know, n not feeling comfortable, the uncomfortableness, you know, that, that we get from, um, we can really get from sort of more, more challenging uh, uh, sort of uh, abstract or semi-abstract works. Um, you know, I, 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 I like that feeling. I, I think it's a really, as I said, quite liberating, liberating feeling to, um, you know, to actually undermine what we feel sure about. Uh, what we what we think we we know visually uh, we, we think we know uh all these as you say cows farms are incredibly they're deep deep in our unconscious and particularly in ireland you know particularly in the in the national psyche the other thing i think is you know that uh it, you know it's just wonderful when you see uh, you see works come uh, when you see works being displayed again uh, it's like seeing an old friend, you know, you, you have favorite works that occasionally will come out maybe once once a year or, or once every couple of years. But, uh, you know, the, the, the local um, uh, population, you know, the people of Limerick for whom the gallery serves continually, I think, can uh, get to know different works in the collection and, and recognize them. And um, so that there's a sense that it's not just a, a counterpoint or a juxtaposition from anywhere. It's it's this it's you know, this local collection. And, and I don't mean local in a provincial sense, but uh, local in a sense of, uh, a sense of pride, you know, that, 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 uh, that it's a public collection that belongs to the, the people of Limerick.